You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is weightlessness in orbit, and we want to know what is meant by the term weightlessness and why do orbiting astronauts experience weightlessness. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The photo shown here was taken by NASA aboard their so-called Vomit Comet, a plane that is used to train soon-to-be astronauts in the sensation of weightlessness. Well, not many of us are astronauts, so we really wouldn't know this feeling, except for the fact that we've been on freefall rides and roller coaster rides at amusement parks. That sensation that you have when you're traveling at high speed over the crest of a roller coaster hill and you're suspended above your seat for a one to three second period of time, that's weightlessness, and it's the same experience that these astronauts are having. What exactly is the cause of weightlessness? Well, it's not an easy question to understand, but for certain, what makes it most difficult to understand is not what you don't know, but rather what you do know or rather believe. You see, many of us come into physics classes with preconceived notions about terms and about causes of experiences, and it's those notions that get in our way of the real learning that must take place. We first must have to do a little bit of unlearning. So before we begin this topic, I want you to take a moment to look at these four true-false statements and identify whether they are true or false according to your own belief statements. Pause the video, read, and do your work. And when you're done, you can play the video. We'll discuss the answers at the end of the video. To understand weightlessness in its cause, it's helpful to understand the distinction between two categories of forces, contact forces and non-contact forces. Contact forces are those forces that result when two objects are physically touching one another. Examples include the normal force, tension force, friction force, air resistance force, etc. Non-contact forces, on the other hand, exist even when the two objects exerting the forces on each other are not touching each other. Examples of these include gravity, magnetic and electrical. Suppose a 600 Newton person is sitting in their chair. There's two forces on the person. There's the normal force, a contact force from the touching of the person in the chair. And there's the non-contact force, the force of gravity pulling down, which would exist even when the person's not touching the earth. If the person is standing on the floor, there's 600 newtons of up force, a contact force from contact between the feet and the floor, and 600 newtons of gravity force down, a non-contact force. Now here's the big deal. You cannot feel a non-contact force since it doesn't result from touching. You can only feel contact forces. So our sense of how much we weigh, our force of gravity, doesn't come from sensing the force of gravity, but rather sensing the non-contact force that counteracts the force of gravity. So the person standing on the floor that weighs 600 newtons knows what 600 newtons of weight feels like because they felt 600 newtons of the contact force, the normal force, acting on their body. Consider the sensations of an elevator rider over the various stages of the ride, the at rest, constant speed, and acceleration stages. The rider's sense for how much they weigh is dependent upon the normal force, the contact force that counteracts the force of gravity. Since this force is changing over the course of the ride, the rider's sensation of how much they weigh also changes. When the rider accelerates upwards, the normal force is greater than the force of gravity, and this gives the rider the sensation of weighing more than their normal weight. On the other hand, when the rider is accelerating downwards, the normal force is less than their gravity force, and the rider feels like they weigh less than their normal weight. But when the rider is moving at constant speed or is simply at rest, the upward force of normal is the same as the downward force of gravity, and the rider feels the their normal weight. Weightlessness is the sensation that occurs when there are no contact forces present on one's body to counteract the person's weight. Weightlessness does not mean that there's no force of gravity present, quite the contrary. Weightlessness means the only force present is the force of gravity. A free-falling person would feel weightless because there's no contact forces present to counteract their weight. Without those contact forces present, the person would feel as if they didn't weigh anything during the free-falling motion. But weightlessness is a sensation and not a reality in the sense that a person who feels weightless is not a person who is without weight. Let's talk about scales that are used to measure your weight. A scale reading is a measure of the upward force applied by the scale on your body. 
Technically speaking, a scale does not measure your weight. Instead, it measures this upward force. But if you stand at rest, or move at constant speed, on a scale, then the upward force is equal to the downward force, and this upward force, or scale reading, is equal to your weight. But if you accelerate on the scale, like bounce up and down, then you can expect that the upward force and the downward force would not be equal, and the scale reading would not give you your weight. Let's revisit that elevator problem. Otis Elevator, scientist who studies elevators, has a mass of 80 kilograms and rides the elevators with a bathroom scale under his feet. What we want to know is the normal force acting on Otis in stages A through D, the acceleration, magnitudes, and directions are shown. I'm going to begin by calculating the gravity force or weight of Otis by going m times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That's 784 newtons, and that's the downforce on Otis, Otis's weight. Now I'm going to calculate the net force on Otis using F net equal MA with the A's given. In stage A, there's no acceleration, so the net force is zero. In stage B, the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared up, so I'm going to go 80 times 5, and I get 400 newtons up for the net force in stage B. In stage C, the net force is 400 newtons down, since the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared down. And finally, in stage E, where D, where the acceleration is 9.8, I can go 80 times 9.8, and I get a net force of 784 newtons down. Now I can calculate the normal force value by using the F net and the F grab. The way I think of this is F net tells me who wins the tug of war between the up normal and the down gravity. And it also tells me the winning margin. For example, in stage A, it's a tie. There's no winner. The F net is zero, so the up equals the down. And I can say the normal force is 784 newtons. In stage B, I notice that the winner is the up force by a winning margin of 400 newtons. So the up force is 400 newtons greater than the 784 down force, making the normal force in stage B 1184 newtons. In stage C, the winner is the down force, wins by 400 newtons, which means the up force lost by 400 newtons, and so it's 400 newtons less than the 784 down force. In stage C, the up force is 384. In stage D, the down force wins by a landslide by 784 newtons, which means the up force is 784 newtons less than the down force, making the up force zero newtons in stage D. Now if I look at my normal force values, I can make some conclusions about the sensations of weight that Otis experiences. In stage A, Otis senses that he's his normal weight. In stage B, Otis feels heavier than normal. And in stage C, Otis would feel like he weighs less than his normal weight. And finally, in stage D, where the normal force is zero, Otis would sense absolute weightlessness. Orbiting astronauts on the International Space Station are free-falling objects. That is, the only force acting upon their bodies is the force of gravity. They, in the space station that they are on, are free-falling around the Earth without free-falling into the Earth. Since there are zero contact forces pushing or pulling up on their body, their sense of how much they weigh is zero. That's why they feel weightless. There are a number of misconceptions regarding orbiting astronauts and this sensation of weightlessness. The first one is that orbiting astronauts are weightless because they don't experience the force of gravity. This is indeed false. Gravity must be present. If it weren't, they couldn't orbit. Gravity supplies the necessary inward force for them to remain in circular motion. The second misconception is that orbiting astronauts on the space station feel weightless because gravity is significantly reduced in space. This too is false. Now to be certain, the force of gravity on an astronaut on the space station is about 10 to 15 percent less than what it is on Earth's surface. But this does not explain the absolute weightlessness that is sensed when the astronaut senses that they have zero weight. 
The third misconception is that orbiting astronauts on the space station feel weightless because there's no air in space. Gravity cannot act in a location where there's no air or a vacuum. This too is false. Gravity is the force that results from attraction of masses. In this case, the mass of the Earth and the mass of the astronauts attract one another. This gravitational attraction exists regardless of the presence or absence of air. Here are the original true-false statements introduced early in the video. And for reasons just discussed, they are all false. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission that gives you an excellent mental workout. You have a simulation that allows you to watch that elevator rider again and you have a written tutorial page that makes a great way to freshen up. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.